The Japanese samurai are famous for their legendary martial prowess, unwavering discipline, and deep sense of honor. However, how true is this image of these warriors? In this video, we will delve into the world of the samurai, we'll explore their origins, their daily routines, and we'll separate fact from fiction. The samurai first appear in the early Heian period, which lasted between 794 and 1185 AD. This was a time when Japan was transitioning from a centralized bureaucratic system under the emperor to a decentralized one. As the central government's power waned, regional clans began to assert their dominance, leading to increased skirmishes and conflicts over land and resources. To protect their interests and territories, these clans required skilled warriors, and thus, the early samurai emerged. The original meaning of the word samurai was to serve. Theoretically, the samurai existed to serve the Japanese emperor. However, in reality, they served a regional warlord, known as a daimyo, who were willing to pay for their services. The hierarchical structure of feudal Japan placed the emperor at the top, a divine and symbolic figure. However, real political power often rested with the shogun, the military dictator, who was typically from a prominent samurai family. Beneath the shogun were the daimyo, powerful regional lords, each commanding their own army of samurai. At the heart of the samurai's code of ethics lay a concept known as Bushido, often translated as the way of the warrior. This unwritten code of conduct governed the samurai's moral principles, guiding their actions both on and off the battlefield. Derived from the words bushi, meaning warrior, and do, meaning way or path, Bushido emphasized virtues that went beyond mere martial prowess. Here are the seven core virtues that were meant to define samurai behavior. Ji or righteousness, emphasized making the right decision, not based on personal feelings or emotions, but on a deep sense of morality. A samurai was expected to uphold justice and act with a clear distinction between right and wrong. You, or courage, was not just about bravery in battle. It was about doing what was right, even in the face of adversity or certain defeat. Jin, or compassion, stressed that a samurai was expected to exhibit pity for those less powerful than themselves. They were trained to be empathetic, caring for the well-being of others and offering assistance whenever necessary. Rei, or respect, encompassed a wide range of behaviors, from the way a samurai treated their superiors to their demeanor towards enemies. It was a reflection of their understanding of the interconnectedness of all things. Makoto, which means honesty and sincerity, taught that deception and dishonesty had no place in the samurai code. Whether in words or actions, a samurai was expected to be genuine and straightforward. Meio, or honor, was the cornerstone of a samurai's existence. Their personal honor and the honor of their family and lord were paramount, and they were expected to defend it, even at the expense of their own lives. Finally, there was chugi, or loyalty. This was the bedrock of the feudal system in which the samurai operated. Their unwavering allegiance to their lord was non-negotiable, and they were expected to serve with utmost dedication. Despite the existence of these virtues, they were not universally adhered to by individual samurai. For instance, even though samurai were meant to be loyal to their masters, even to death, some samurai would leave to find a new lord to serve. Other samurai even took the opportunity to wander freely without a daimyo to serve. Those that did this were called ronin. There was no set rule for what a ronin should do, because he was his own master. Many ronin became nothing more than robbers and thieves, using their military skills to intimidate peasants. The samurai's equipment, both armor and weapons, were meticulously crafted, reflecting the warrior's status, skill, and the functional demands of combat. Each piece was not only a tool of war, but also a work of art, imbued with symbolism and crafted with unparalleled precision. Their armor, known as yoroi, was designed to provide maximum protection while allowing flexibility and mobility. Made of lacquered plates of leather or metal, 
These plates were laced together with silk or leather cords, creating a flexible structure that could absorb and distribute the force of blows. The helmet, or kabuto, was a particularly significant component of the armor. Often adorned with decorative features like crests or ornamental wings, the kabuto was both a protective gear and a symbol of the wearer's identity and status. Protecting the face was the mempo, or facial armor, which often included a fearsome mask designed to intimidate opponents while safeguarding the samurai's face from cuts and strikes. These masks, sometimes crafted to resemble demons or fierce animals, added a psychological edge to the samurai's presence on the battlefield. The samurai's primary weapon, and perhaps the most iconic, was the katana. This long, curved sword was celebrated for its sharpness and cutting ability. Forged using a unique process that involved folding and reforging the steel multiple times, the katana was both resilient and razor-sharp. Its creation was considered an art form, with master swordsmiths being held in high esteem. The shorter wakizashi accompanied the katana, and together they formed the daisho, the paired long and short swords that symbolized the samurai's honor. Beyond the katana, the samurai were also proficient with a range of other weapons. The yumi, a longbow, was a favored weapon for long-range combat, while the naginata, a polearm with a curved blade, was effective for both infantry and cavalry engagements. The kanabo, a spiked or studded club, was a brutal weapon designed to crush armor and bones. The history of the samurai is punctuated by a series of major battles and conflicts that not only showcased their martial prowess, but also played a pivotal role in shaping the political landscape of Japan. One of the earliest and most defining conflicts was the Genpei War, lasting from 1180 to 1185. This five-year-long struggle between the Taira and Minamoto clans ended with the decisive Battle of Dan no Ura, where the Minamoto clan emerged victorious. The aftermath saw the establishment of the Kamakura Shogunate, with Minamoto no Yoritomo becoming Japan's first shogun, marking the beginning of samurai-led governance. The Mongol invasions of Japan in 1274 and 1281 were another crucial event. Despite their dominance in mainland Asia, the Mongols faced fierce resistance from the samurai. The battles were intense, but the Mongols were ultimately repelled, in part due to the famous kamikaze or divine winds, which destroyed a significant portion of their fleet. The Onin War from 1467 to 1477 was a devastating civil conflict that led to a century-long period of warfare known as the Sengoku period. Triggered by a succession dispute within the Ashikaga shogunate, the war saw various samurai clans vying for dominance, leading to the rise of prominent figures like Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. Oda Nobunaga's push for unification saw the pivotal Battle of Okehazama in 1560, where, despite being heavily outnumbered, Nobunaga defeated the Imagawa clan. His campaign, however, was cut short at the incident at Hanoji in 1582, where he was betrayed by one of his own generals, Akechi Mitsuhide. The path to unification was continued by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, culminating in the siege of Odawara in 1590, which led to the subjugation of the Hojo clan. Hideyoshi's ambition didn't stop there. He launched two unsuccessful invasions of Korea in 1592 and 1597. The culmination of the Sengoku period came with the Battle of Sekigahara in 1600. This monumental clash between the eastern and western armies, led by Tokugawa Ieyasu and Ishida Mitsunari respectively, resulted in a decisive victory for Ieyasu. This victory paved the way for the establishment of the Tokugawa Shogunate, which would rule Japan for over 250 years, ushering in a period of peace and stability known as the Edo period. Contrary to the popular image of the samurai perpetually engaged in battle, periods of peace in Japan meant that many samurai spent their days far from the battlefield, immersed in the duties and routines of their station. The daily life of a samurai was a blend of rigorous discipline, cultural pursuits, 
and administrative duties. Battle training was, of course, a cornerstone of their daily regime. From a young age, a samurai was trained in the arts of war. This included not only mastery of the sword, but also archery, horseback riding, and tactics. Practice sessions, known as keiko, were regular, ensuring that the samurai was always prepared for combat. Beyond martial training, education was highly valued. Samurai were often well-read, familiar with Chinese and Japanese classics. They studied calligraphy, poetry, and philosophy, emphasizing both the warrior and scholar aspects of their identity. The practice of writing haiku, a traditional form of Japanese poetry, was a favored pastime, allowing them to express their reflections on life, nature, and their experiences. Cultural pursuits like the tea ceremony, or shanoyu, were also integral to their daily life. This ritualistic preparation and consumption of tea was not just about the drink, but was a spiritual and philosophical exercise, emphasizing harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. Samurai also had administrative responsibilities. Those who served a lord or held land were involved in governance, overseeing the welfare of villages under their charge, mediating disputes, and ensuring that taxes were collected. They held meetings, corresponded with other officials, and maintained records, ensuring the smooth running of their domains. Spirituality played a significant role in the samurai's life. Many were adherents of Zen Buddhism, finding resonance in its teachings of mindfulness, simplicity, and the impermanence of life. Meditation and contemplative practices were common, helping them find inner peace and clarity. By the late Edo period in the 19th century, Japan had enjoyed over two centuries of relative peace under the Tokugawa shogunate. This prolonged peace, while beneficial for the nation's stability and cultural development, meant that the samurai, primarily a warrior class, found themselves in an era where their warrior skills were less in demand. Economic challenges further exacerbated the samurai's predicament. With limited warfare, many lower-ranking samurai found themselves without a master or steady income. The burden of maintaining their status, which included wearing expensive garments and participating in various ceremonies, weighed heavily on them, leading to financial strain. Many were forced to take up other professions, such as farming or trading, which were considered beneath their status. The arrival of Western powers in the mid-19th century particularly the 1853 arrival of Commodore Matthew Perry and his black ships, exposed Japan to external pressures and underscored the nation's need to modernize. The Tokugawa shogunate's perceived inability to handle these foreign threats led to internal dissent. This culminated in the Boshin War of 1868-1869, a civil war between forces loyal to the Tokugawa shogunate and those supporting the restoration of the emperor's power. The imperial forces, advocating for modernization and the end of the shogunate, emerged victorious. The subsequent Meiji Restoration in 1868 marked a significant shift in Japan's political and social structure. Emperor Meiji's new government was keen on rapid modernization, drawing inspiration from Western nations. This modernization included the establishment of a conscripted national army reducing the samurai's exclusive role as the nation's military protectors. In 1873, the Hitore Edict was issued, which prohibited the carrying of swords in public, striking a symbolic blow to the samurai's identity. Then, in 1876, the samurai class was officially abolished, and their special privileges were stripped away. They were integrated into the new societal structure, with many taking up roles in the burgeoning bureaucracy, military, or business sectors. While the samurai as a formal class ceased to exist, their legacy and the values of Bushido continued to influence modern Japan, finding expression in various facets of Japanese culture, ethics, and national identity. I hope you have enjoyed learning about the history of the Japanese samurai. If you'd like to know more, be sure to check out the History Skills website. I look forward to seeing you again in our next video.